Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Minnis and welcome to Books My Dad Owes a PhD in English Literature Thinks I Should Read because reading them improves my understanding of good literature, also known as Gwen Aimlessly Chatters About Real Literature. So, uh, my book uh, from Dad's List, which amazingly we are finally slowly, ever so slowly coming up on the end of, uh, the book for this week is... Oh wait, book by Rex Stout. That's right, this book doesn't actually have an interesting cover. So here we are. The Doorbell Rang by Rex Stout, but uh, just so that we all have something to actually look at, let's bring up this particular uh, edition with a introduction by Stuart Kaminsky, which I have not in fact read because I read the version uh, that I showed the cover for before. And that version was actually published and printed back in the 60s, unlike this Kaminsky version, which came out in the in the 2009-ish. So, as you can see on this cover, it's a Nero Wolf mystery. This is later on in the Nero Wolf mysteries. Uh, when you look it up, this is a number several tens into the series. It's an eminent eminently lengthy series, and it this is the only one that I've ever actually read in it, um, but this is the one my father picked out. Now, it's because I'm not, I'm not that much of a mystery reader. There are some mystery books that I will read, but this isn't really my thing. Uh, so, this is an unusual plot line. Uh, because, and I suppose I can get to roughly who Nero Wolf is in a moment, um, very roughly because I haven't read most of the series, but in this book, Nero Wolf, who is not the protagonist, Nero Wolf is, is the man who is the investigator, uh, but our friend Archie Goodwin is the narrator, first person, and the protagonist. These books are all from his perspective. Um, but anyways, in this book, a woman approaches Nero Wolf because she is being harassed by the FBI. She says ostensibly because she sent copies of a particular book that had been recently published, which talked about things going on behind closed doors in the FBI. We all know that books that are about things going on behind closed doors in governmental or law enforcement organizations are frequently filled with stories of things happening that probably shouldn't have happened or that people wish wouldn't happen or that, you know, have to happen but are kind of morally iffy and ethically iffy. So... She thought, well, everybody should know what the FBI is getting up to and sent out umpty squillion copies of this book to a lot of people and following this, the FBI started harassing her. And she went to a private investigator to say, get the FBI to stop harassing me. And from the outset, of course, Nero Wolf says that's weird and lunacy. And Archie Goodwin spends a good section of, a, a good chunk of this book, which isn't very long, but he spends a good chunk of it just thinking that this is, this is silly. Because what are you going to do to get, to tell the FBI to get off of somebody's, to, to stop bothering a person? Um, in the end, what they do in the course of this is they find a murder that the FBI was implicated in and arrange, first of all, to get the FBI, get several FBI agents to get caught in a compromising position of breaking into Nero Wolf's home in search of evidence they believe he has proving that they committed a particular murder, and they all catch the FBI breaking into their home on the strength of nothing that could be taken to court, and so, effectively, they blackmail the FBI by saying, look, we, having found out who actually committed this murder and that it wasn't the FBI, we will 
get that person convicted so that people stop thinking that you did it, and also, while we're at it, uh, if you decide to try to harass us, we're going to take you to court for breaking into for breaking into a private home based on nothing more than speculation. And what they then say is, and so, since you've done all of this, we'll hold off on doing it if you do what our client wants, which is for you to leave her alone. Which is an interesting way of handling the problem, and uh, for the record, uh, he winds up taking this on even though it's a lunatic idea. Um, Nero Wolf does because the woman pays him enough that he's not going to have to take on any cases that he doesn't want to. And since he is somebody who greatly enjoys good food and has a particular hobby with orchids, uh, there he has a lot of things that he likes to do that have nothing to do with solving mysteries. Uh, this is not somebody who feels that solving mysteries are his primary raison d'etre. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of other things that he likes to do. Um, now, the one thing that my father pointed out is that in a lot of cases, these books don't... They don't play fair with the reader. These are not books that you read to figure out who killed somebody. They're not books that you read uh, to figure things out in advance of other people because Nero Wolf has several different people doing his legwork. Archie Goodwin, our ongoing narrator, is only one of them. Uh, there's Sal and a couple of other people, and so Nero Wolf uh, will often get information that our narrator is not privy to and reveal it all at the end. And so, uh, you don't read those books for that purpose. Um, you know, a lot of books, Agatha Christie novels, for example, those are books that you read because all of the clues are there to solve it if only you know where to look. In this one, the clues are not always there, and, uh... You know, it's not that it's irrational that uh, somebody's subordinate does not know all the same things that the person in charge does, but it does mean that this isn't, that these are not generally uh, books to puzzle through. Um, also, these are, these are lighter reads. These aren't these aren't the kinds of stories that, these aren't the kinds of novels that you're going to be reading because there's, you know, the dark depths of human nature exposed or anything else. Now, I have to say, uh, talking to my father, who uh, has read, I believe, nearly this whole series, if not all of it, um, he seems to feel that they're very, very light. I that they're lightly written, that they're humorously written in some ways. Uh, there's a certain wryness to it. I grant, um, and these aren't serious books, but I didn't find this one particularly absorbing, and I didn't find it a page turner. I I didn't find it hard to read, and it was a short book, so it wasn't it wasn't a slog, but I I found this a little um a little matter of fact, a little bit lacking in a little bit lacking in actual humor. Like I said, there's there's a certain wryness to it. Uh there's a certain um amusement at at some things that are inherent in it, but it didn't it didn't amuse me. It didn't make me feel... I didn't feel that this was particularly funny. Um, but then again, I can see where the humor would be, and I think this may have very much been a matter of taste. Uh, this is one I just don't really have a lot to say about. 
Um, it may have been the shortness. It may have been, in fact, that my father, uh, who has a very different perspective on books, it may have been that I should have read the first one in the series because it may have had more, I don't know, character details that would help me get into the series better. Um, but this one... I just don't really have a lot to say about it. A lot of what I've said so far has, in fact, been echoing secondhand things that I've heard from my father, who, as you know, I trust very sincerely in his opinions about various works of fiction. Um, but this isn't... This just isn't to my taste. And... Uh, without it being to my taste and simultaneously not not being particularly noteworthy in other ways, or at least not in ways that stood out to me. I can't really say anything. It's it's very much of its moment. You can set this very, very clearly into the 1960s when it was written and published. Um, but other than that, I, I just... I don't think I have anything else to say. So, I'm going to stop this video here before I ramble endlessly um, about absolutely nothing at all. And uh, that'll be everything, and I'll see you all next week.